Our scripture today is from Revelation chapter 22, verses 7 to 21. Hear the word of God. Behold, I am coming soon. Blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. I, John, am the one who heard and saw these things, and when I heard and seen them, I fell down to worship at the feet of an angel who had been showing them to me. But he said to me, Don't do it. I am a fellow servant with you and with your brothers, the prophets, and of all who keep the words of this book, worship God. Then he told me, Do not seal up the words of the prophecy of this book, because the time is near. Let him who does wrong continue to do wrong. Let him who is vile continue to be vile. Let him who does right continue to do right. And let him who is holy continue to be holy. Behold, I am coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. Outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the idolaters, everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and offspring of David and the bright morning star. The spirit and the bride say, come, and let him who hears say, come. Whoever is thirsty, let him come, and whoever wishes, let him take the free gift of, of the water of life. I warn everyone who hears the words of the prophecy of this book, if anyone adds anything to them, God will add to him the plagues described in this book. And if anyone takes words away from this book of prophecy, God will take away from him his share in the tree of life and in the holy city, which are described in this book. He who testified to these things says, yes, I am coming soon. Amen. Come, Lord Jesus. The grace of the Lord Jesus be with God's people. Amen. Please be seated. Here we are at the end of the book of Revelation. And the book of Revelation ends. We begin with the letters to the churches. We end with uh, an affirmation to the church. And that affirmation is, Behold, I am coming soon, or I am coming quickly. And also, the saints utter a prayer. Here's their prayer. Amen, come Lord Jesus. This uh, book of Revelation ends the word of God, the Bible, and it's like a quilt frame. I want you to think about a quilt frame. Uh, in the old days, well, maybe not old, because there's still some churches I go into and I see a room filled with these big frames. And, uh, and well, in the old days, women used to save up their scraps of cloth and cut them into squares, and then they would come to a place like church and they would sew these, uh, these strips of cloth together and make, make quilts, a, a quilt frame. And I want you to think of uh, the book of Revelation as like this quilt frame that sews the whole Bible together, summarizing the history of heaven and of earth. All through this book of Revelation are, are sub-themes. And we've been, we started this book, the sermons on the book of Revelation, back in June. And we're ending kind of uh, suddenly because um, our stewardship's coming up. But if you really wanted to, to get into the book of Revelation, you need to get into a Bible study where you can take time to uh, understand each of these uh, sub-themes. And here's what sub-themes you'll see in the book of Revelation. The coming of the kingdom of God, judgment upon earth, the tribulation of the saints, the calling of the Jewish people to receive Jesus as their Messiah, the sovereignty of Christ as the judge of the living and the dead, <coughs> the collapse of political power, and the end of the earth as we know it, and the beginning of a new heaven and earth, and uh, after the judgment, the, the um, hell and, and heaven. <coughs> Revelation ends with the destruction of this earth, and the beginning of a new heaven and a new earth. There you have the whole book of Revelation 
in a nutshell. But as I said, to really understand that you'll be years and years and years in Bible study. This book ends with a prayer and an affirmation that's very important for us to remember. <coughs> and that affirmation is found on that, that uh, slide there. It's, Amen, come Lord Jesus. And Jesus answers that prayer in Revelation 22, 12. We pray, come Lord Jesus, and Jesus says, behold, I am coming soon. This word Maranatha is an Aramaic word, and it's used uh, it's a constant prayer. We must pray that prayer, Maranatha. Come, Lord Jesus. And Jesus answers, Maranatha, behold, I am coming soon. That word affirms our faith in Christ and also is our challenge to the world to come to recognize that Jesus is our uh, the Lord of heaven. And, <coughs> and here's what Jesus said, behold, my reward is with me, and I will give to everyone according to what he has done. And uh, as we went through the children's sermon, what he has done, what does that mean? It means, what have you done with this word, Maranatha? Come, Lord Jesus. How often have you extended a gospel invitation to the world that Jesus is in your heart and that you really want him to come? That's uh, where we get our reward. Maranatha shows that we are children of God and joint heirs with Christ Jesus. You know, from the very beginning of Scripture, it's all about Jesus. From the very the creation of the world, it's all about his person, his plans, his promise, his perfection, and his desire to have as many people join him in his heavenly kingdom as possible. And he gives us a job and a reward. And our job is to tell everyone about every, everyone in this generation that we have possibility that Jesus is offering to be your Savior. And he's offering to save you from a godless eternity, which is hell. So it's a very good word, that Maranatha. It's a word that we should be sharing. Corey Ten Boom <coughs> said these words. We're not a post-war generation. We're a pre-peace generation. Jesus is coming, and we're to get the word out that he is coming. And Jesus said, I'm coming, and I'm bringing my reward with me. This reward is received and given to those who get the message out that Jesus is coming and that we can be saved. We are to challenge unbelievers to trust Christ. Because Christ says, Behold, I am coming soon. And that word soon can mean soon or quickly. That he's coming so quickly, you better be ready now because you might not be ready uh, then. He's coming sooner than we think. Do you know when you get into your car and you're driving, you look at your right-hand mirror and it's written in small print under that mirror, objects are closer than they appear. And the book of Revelation is telling us Christ coming is nearer than it appears. And we always must be ready to give that prophecy, Maranatha, until it comes true. You know there are some scholars uh, today who say the book of Revelation is not a book of prophecy. It's only a metaphor of the church in previous times and our struggle in the past. And it's ironic because how many times in our scripture today does, does it actually say, Jesus said, this is a book of prophecy. And don't seal it up. Don't hide it. Get the word out. He says, blessed is he who keeps the words of the prophecy in this book. A prophecy is something that's going to come forward in the, in the future. It's something coming. It's not here yet. It's coming. And Jesus calls us, be prepared by not worshiping anyone but God himself, by God alone. And we see around us this world is drawing us away from God to worship other things. This world is ignoring God's law. This world doesn't care that Christ is coming. This uh, past week when we were on vacation, Lauren and I were in Washington, D.C., we had to ride the metro a lot, crowded, oh, it was, if I tell you, if you go to Washington, don't drive, 
And be prepared when you get on that metro that's going to be, be filled with, with people. And I'm thinking, how many of those people know that Jesus is coming? How many of those people could pray that prayer, Maranatha? Come, Lord Jesus. When you pray that prayer, Jesus answered, Behold, I am coming soon. As Revelation ends, John is shown that river of life as clear as crystal flowing from the throne of God, and he hears those words of Jesus, I am coming soon. And John is so overwhelmed and so emotional as you and I would be that he falls to worship at the feet of an angel. And you know in the book of Daniel, Daniel and Revelation go together. And Daniel also sees this revelation, and he falls at the feet of an angel. And both angels give them a direct order, do not do this. Jesus is your Savior. Worship God alone. Don't worship anyone. Don't worship anything but God alone. Because the truth is, Jesus is either going to be our Savior now or our judge later. Worship God alone. <clears throat> I want to tell you a little story to illustrate this. It's a story from the Old West. And it's about a frontier town where there's a wagon whose horse bolted. And that wagon was dangerously careening through the town. And there was a little boy on that wagon. 